Hey everyone, this is Fernando doing another video for the Modern Survivalist. In this case, an old school kind of video. In this case, the topic is firearms, putting together a decent firearms battery, and also mentioning the top three firearms you could have. And it is a hot topic in the survival preparedness community. We basically all like guns a lot. I, in particular, have been shooting for quite some time. Took my first offensive shooting course when I was 15 years old. And then kept kept on shooting ever since. Owned um, a bunch of guns, a, a big variety of them. Bought, sold, traded. So I got the chance to shoot pretty much most of the interesting interesting things out there. So that's where all this is coming from. Some of my mistakes made, lessons learned in terms of of buying stuff, selling it again, and realizing later on that what you needed is. Is a, is a much specific uh, variety of weapons. So let's get started. Firearms. One of the first things you see recommended to everyone basically who starts asking any newbie that comes along and says I want a gun for, for the fence, I have very little experience. One of the first things people will, will recommend, they will think of something simple to use, powerful, effective, a stopper in terms of, of the fence. They're gonna be recommending a shotgun. It's going to be either a Remington 870 or a Mossberg 500 12 gauge pump action shotgun. It is going to be recommended basically because it's simple to operate, because it's very powerful, effective, it has a certain amount of intimidating power as well and there's this misconception that it's much easier to hit with a shotgun than with other uh, firearms because it has a spread to it as distance increases. Truth is that you still have to aim with a shotgun. It's a pure myth to think that it just uh, sweeps the streets with with uh, <laughs> with buckshot. It really not that like that. And especially at the ranges you're likely to encounter, it is a very small cluster of of pellets. Of birdshot or or buckshot, and you still have to very much aim so as to hit. One of the uh, problems I have with a shotgun being recommended to a, a novice shooter is that it's, though mechanically simple in terms of the construction of the firearm, it's not simple to operate. It requires a pump action shotgun, requires you pumping so as to extract each spent uh, shell and pump one back into the chamber and it is very fast done just pumping it but it is still a complex mechanical process when you look at it compared to semi-automatic firearms where you just pull the trigger and it is the case in which problems may arise someone that hasn't got enough experience someone nervous uh, when using that weapon for self-defense in a stressful situation is likely to make a mistake maybe short strike the, the pump, if fail to uh, pump it back again, just keep pulling the trigger. There's uh, the possibility of this happening. If you have a little bit of experience, you may be thinking, well, that's so simple. I see it done in the movies all the time, and just keep pumping up and, and firing. It is, it is still a mechanical, uh, it's, it's still a, a mechanical uh, process that you have to go through so as to fire each round. And second, it involves both hands. So if you're struggling with someone or if you are hurt in some way and you cannot have both hands so as to use it, you are basically reduced to a single shot weapon. All right, so those are basically some of the inconveniences. It has quite a bit of recoil as well and it can be pretty intimidating for a, a new shooter. So even though it's often recommended as a very versatile gun, especially when you throw in that most of these come with, in a combo with a, with a spare barrel. So you have a longer barrel for small game hunting, you have the shorter barrel for, for slugs, for big game hunting and for defensive purposes. And because of this, it's considered a very versatile firearm, which in many cases it is, but as versatile as it is, it's not great at anything that it does. We're going to be getting into that in a second. Then one of the things recommended is having a semi-automatic, semi-auto, center fire carbine. What this means basically is an AR-15, which I don't like much myself, or an AK-47, 
or 74 which I really do like and this is my recommendation for someone inclining towards a survivalist preparedness mindset something that is gonna be bulletproof it's gonna be lasting forever it is uh, something that does not need nearly as much care and maintenance as the AR-15 guys please don't don't waste my time and don't waste yours yes I, I know that a lot of lots of people love them they're they're good and all but they require a certain amount of maintenance which the AK-47 does not all right it works great when properly taken care of and in spite of that I don't like much a, a 556 five, as as around I think that a, a 3 a 3 a point three zero is better 762 by 39 is is a more a powerful round so has to be firing so basically basically because of that and when it comes down to it in terms of reliability when a, when abused to an extreme when it comes to that point, when it comes to reliability, when the firearm is going to be abused and neglected, it's uh, the AR is going to be failing much sooner than the AK-47. Of course, eventually everything fails. We all know that everything can break as well. But the AK-47, it has a rightfully earned reputation as a indestructible rifle. All right, we well know that uh, that thing does not exist, exist really, but it is as close as we can get in terms of. Of, of a center fire semi-automatic carbine. It's considered like the Glock of, of semi-automatic carbines. All right, yes, these are not assault weapons. These are not uh, automatic. The ones you're gonna be finding in the civilian market are gonna be a uh, semi-auto only, not a uh, full automatic weapons. But uh, still, I think that it has, um, and we go back to shotgun. Is it gonna be more effective in stopping someone than a shotgun? Yes. Uh, AK-47 or an AR is going to be more effective at, at stopping someone is well maybe not the AR-15 with properly uh, selected ammunition the shotgun I think is going to be more effective with with good buckshot or slugs I think it's going to be more effective than the AR-15 but an AK-47 with good ammunition and especially the ability to shoot fast follow-up shots compared to a pump action shotgun are by all means more effective yes there's the issue of over penetrations in, in in many cases especially if you live in a house with dry walls and you have people around it may be an issue to consider uh, the, the over penetration of these uh, rifles but uh, still i think that in general you if, if you're going to look if you're looking at it from a, a defensive uh, point of view the, the AK-47 is going to be better than the shotgun. One of the other weapons often recommended for a novice shooters is a nice 22 long rifle carbine. In most cases it's going to be a Ruger 10-22 even though CZ and Marlin make good semi-automatic 22 long rifles as well which do require a, a little bit of, of attention i think that cz makes some of the most accurate 22 long rifles so there's something going on there i like marlins a, a lot marlin uh, 65 uh, 60 but ruger 1022 seems to be the most one of i think that the most popular um 22 long rifle is a marlin 60 or 65 that would be actually the most popular but these days Ruger 1022 are around uh, everywhere and yes it is often recommended because ammunition is very cheap it has very little recoil and you can shoot tons of rounds in practice which is something that the new shooter should be doing indeed it is also a pretty handy weapon as well one of the most common ones you will find in any in any, any country house in any farm it's going to be a 22 long rifle carbine it's used for pest control for small game hunting and we go back to the shotgun the shotgun with the longer barrel being used for small game hunting well yes but a 22 long rifle carbine is going to be more effective in that role in terms of cost of ammunition in terms of a uh, meat wasted because of uh, of the, the the powerful um, the, the power of each round fired for small game hunting from a survival perspective and 22 long rifle carving is gonna be better for you in terms of its use for for the fence well it's not it, it is indeed one of the smallest rounds there is probably the most the, the smallest round you, you will find in most gun stores but it is 
it, it is really not recommended for defensive shooting. I know that sometimes it is. People say, well, no one wants to get shot with a 22 long rifle. Well, yeah, I don't want to get you know shot with anything, not even with an air rifle. That doesn't mean that it's adequate for defensive purposes. If you have to go for a 22 long rifle for defense, or if that's basically what you're going to be looking at for some time, I seriously recommend going for semi-automatic and something that has enough capacity so as to at least try to compensate for the lack of stopping power of each round with more rounds following up. Be absolutely certain that just one round is not going to be getting uh, uh, the job done as it often happens, but even more so with 22 long rifle, more rounds you have to think of start shooting and stopping only when the threat goes down. Sa same goes for all uh, firearms in general, but especially so for 22 long rifle. Then we have the handgun being recommended and often neglected down to the back of the list quite a bit. Uh, reasons for that are that handguns are harder to shoot, they're less powerful than shotguns and center fire rifles or carbines, um, they're uh, harder to shoot accurately, so all the right reasons to have to say, well, why would I want the handgun? The thing is that the only thing that it has going for it is the key of why it should be your main gun. It is the gun that you will have with you when you need it. All these things are great, you know, shotguns, carbines, semi-automatic uh, uh, rifles, AKs, ARs, and and all that. But the problem is, you basically will not will not have that when you need it. Uh, yes, maybe if you're home and you hear something going on and you have enough time. But most people, what they keep handy even at home is their handgun, the same handgun they conceal carry maybe. And when we start getting into concealed carry. The only thing you can actually uh, carry conceal is a handgun, not a shotgun or an AK-47 or an AR. And whenever there's problems, whenever you actually need a weapon, if you have been responsible enough to wear and when legal to do so, have your concealed carry permit and have your handgun with you, that's going to be the gun you have. So it's not as accurate uh, as a carbine, it's not as easy to shoot accurately and follow up shots, has, hasn't got the capacity uh, of an AR of a, or an AK, hasn't got the, shot, the stopping power of a shotgun, but it is the gun that you will have with you. All right, so you have to think of it as your main gun. For a civilian, for a survivalist, a, a prepper, anything, you, any way you want to call it, anyone that is considering the possibility of self-defense outside of a military environment, where in that case the long arm will be your main weapon, and the the handgun it is a far secondary weapon in which you go back to when there is a failure with your long arm, which is a completely different scenario and a completely different. A set of requirements it it is it changes the game completely in your case your main gun is your handgun and that requires you to consider how uh, proficient it is how good you are with it how much uh, stopping power you have per round how much uh, ammo capacity you have for each round if you th start thinking of it in this way you soon realize that uh, a concealed carry type of gun meaning a, a compact or subcompact gun with limited capacity limited stopping power per round in in many cases even less than nine millimeter people looking at a 380 acp you start seeing that you're cutting yourself short in terms of the capabilities of that gun in my case, I've said it time and again, gonna be repeating it until things change, Glock 17 or Glock 19. Especially if this is your first gun, you want it to be a 9mm so as to afford going to all these classes you have to take, practice enough so as to be proficient. Remember folks, it's not just about going to the range and planking, getting a couple pointers on, on safety handling and just punching paper. You need to actually get defensive pistol shooting training. It's going to be a, a novice class where they teach you the basics and then at least get a, a medium, intermediate, advanced uh, class for a little bit extra. And you have to refresh these concepts. If you know nothing about guns, go to one of these classes and learn properly. It is, based on, in my experience, it's uh, much harder to teach someone uh, to undo some of the mis uh, misconcepts. It has happened to me as well in learning to undo some of the things that, that you have been uh, improperly practicing than just teaching 
correctly right away to someone and starting with a good foundation from the beginning. Yes, as, as time goes by and once you have your basic 9mm handgun covered, you can go for a, a, a Glock in 40 and 357 SIG, which is my favorite round in, in my case. But uh, at least have one 9mm. And if you only have one gun, make that a Glock 19, Glock 17, so as to have that in 9mm, which with properly selected ammunition is still a very effective uh, stopper. Then we go back to, as you see, we're kind of rounding up what is often recommended as an uh, ideal or close to ideal uh, firearms battery for uh, the survivalist. This goes back to the days of, of metal tapping and survival guns. This is the list that you often see uh, rounded up in most uh, discussions regarding uh, if, if firearm survival and, and preparedness. What, what is missing here? Well, uh, bolt action, bolt action scope rifle generally in 308 it's gonna be usually a uh, Remington <laughs> 700 there are good guns as well there's there's plenty of, of good choices a Winchester 70 you have a CZ also make, make good makes good guns I like the the 550 series a lot uh, there's there's quite a bit to choose from a Seiko, Seiko, or Seiko is, is, a, is a good uh, manufacturer as well. So there, there's quite a bit, but generally a Remington 700 uh, is going to be one, one of the most popular ones. In this case, why is it that you go for something like this? Well, it, it is in terms of misconceptions, it is what people say they're going to be using when reaching out and touching someone. And the problem here is that you hardly have a scenario where you're shooting someone at the ranges in which this would be appropriate. But a scope bolt action rifle, you're gonna be talking about 200 meters, 300 meters, right? 100 at the very least for a, for a nice uh, scoped rifle. I mean, this can be reaching out to 500 meters, 500 yards or more beyond that given uh, some models and, and certain uh, caliber selections. But it is definitely a longer range type of gun. And the problem here is that uh, when people say, well, I'm gonna, this is what I'm gonna be using before they come close. This is what I'm gonna be using against the looters, uh, re shooting them before they get near to me. That's, uh, the, the problem with that is that it's uh, basically wishful thinking. The, the role of a sniper, and this is what people have in mind when they think of this, is, is that of, a, of, an, of an active, offensive a type of engagement. You're specifically looking for someone to uh, so, so nail. It's not that you have the, the possibility to see these guys coming your way uh, 500 yards away or, ev or even more. So as to go get your 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 bolt action, your scope rifle, then come back and shoot them. Uh, that guys is called murder. As of uh, as of legal matters, as of right now, if you shoot someone a hundred yards away, you will have no basis so as to justify self defense. And that's basically what it comes down to. When when you, when we get rid of all the fantasy and all the um, the wishful thinking and all that stuff. It basically comes down to that. You will not be able to explain to any judge, any jury, or the police why you shot someone 100 yards away in self-defense. Well, they looked like looters, they looked like bad guys, whatever. They're not even within range to do anything uh, to you or even interact, or have a conversation, or uh, throw threats your way, say they're gonna be killing you. There's, no, there's not even distance for proper interaction. How are you gonna be justifying shooting someone at those ranges? So I think that in terms of uh, a defensive use of a scoped bolt action rifle, it, it is quite limited indeed. Yes, there may be some cases in which in, in certain isolated locations, uh, you know, more uh, far out uh, homesteads or farms, especially when the environment is more uh, specific towards that, like longer uh, ranges for you to see. And in that case, maybe, in that case, maybe it makes a little bit more sense. In general, it will not be the case. In general, uh, and I'm being generous here, guys, it is practically impossible, and I don't know of any case in which shooting someone at those distances was ever justified as a self-defense. 
Now, if you're looking at this in terms of, um, of, of a hunting rifle, by all means, you're going to be needing one of those. But um, it's only if that's one of the activities you do, if you are a hunter, if you see yourself doing that in the future. No, hunting as a way of putting food on the table in a survival post-collapse scenario is is very thin indeed. The probability of that happening is so unlikely that uh, thinking of uh, turning into a hunter because of meat, because of um, a, a shit hit the fan scenario is, is pretty unlikely. If something that serious ever happened, uh, based on, on my personal experience in Argentina and based on what I read of what happens in, in our places, this includes the 30s in USA when people start actually hunting for food in mass, game runs out in a matter of weeks. So in a matter of weeks, anything that is edible is gonna be getting killed. In Argentina, what happened is that uh, rabbits, hares, the, the uh, small game uh, cre creatures, well, those were basically wiped out in a matter of weeks. It was a, a matter of getting pretty much involved so as to save those species because they were getting decimated by people actually killing them for food. So it is, it, it is a miscalculated plan that, uh, to think that you're gonna be hunting for food post-collapse scenario, all right? Now, if you are actively involved in long-range shooting, if you wanna cover uh, more of your bases, then yeah, then probably yes. One of the other firearms that you would be needing, so as to round up this a little bit better, is uh, air rifle which can be used in some cases for small game hunting, for pest control, mostly for a cheap and affordable practice, which is the role in which I would put it myself. Finally, one of, uh, one of the guns that you sometimes see mentioned and I think it doesn't get as much attention as, as it should is a 22 long rifle handgun. In my experience, pistols are, are nice, 22 long rifle pistols are nice, but they do, in, in most cases, they have failures way too often. In my case, I would recommend going with a revolver, and that takes us back to a, a revolver, basically going for what it's called a kit gun. A kit gun is basically a four inch, a revolver with target sights and 22 long rifle. You will, you will find some of these uh, made by Smith & Wesson are the, the nicer ones, I believe. If you go for a revolver, uh, Smith & Wesson is pretty much hard to beat in this category. And I like that in, in many cases you find them for uh, a magazine, a uh, cylinder capacity of nine rounds, which in some case, we go back to here, it kind of compensates for the lack of stopping power if that gun ever has to be used in a, in a defensive role. You know, 22 long rifle, by far one of the best, uh, one of the worst options you can go for defensive shooting. But at the, at the very least, you have, you know, if you have nine rounds, 11 rounds in some cases, and some revolvers that I've seen, then it does look a little bit more more competent, more interesting with with good ammunition. But the role here for the 22 long uh, the 22 long rifle revolver, the role of the kit gun is basically plinking practice uh, as a fun gun as well. Which is yes, it is it is a consideration as well for for small game hunting. If you're good if you're good enough with it. A uh, four inch barrel revolver with, with target sights can be pretty accurate if you do your part of the job as well. It does require a bit more practice than a, a 22 long rifle carbine, especially if you add a scope to it, but it can be used in that role as well. With practice, you can become quite a bit of a good shot with a, a 22 long rifle revolver. And the advantage besides that is how compact it is. It is much easier to carry around than a, than a carbine. It's easier to hide in a, in a bug out bag a kit, in a bag to, to have with you around. It is one of those guns that I think does not get enough attention, enough, enough attention as, it, as it should go. So now that we basically covered the, the more typical survival armory, let's go back and recap a little bit on what it is that you should be doing in terms of uh, sticking to maybe three guns so as to have a basic setup, and a setup that's gonna be covering most of your needs. In my case, um, the recommendation goes as following. First gun to get for anyone thinking of anything other than target practice, if there's the slightest possibility of you considering the use of this gun for defensive purposes, go for the handgun first. Number one, indeed, 
no doubt about that. Number one, get your handgun. It is the hardest one to master, it is the hardest one to shoot accurately, it does not have enough stopping power compared to, to shotguns or AKs, but it is the gun that you can have with you if you ever have to go out, about, out and about arms, if you ever have to go uh, outside your home with a gun, the gun that you're going to be carrying is going to be a handgun. The gun that's more handy, easier to conceal, easier to throw into a pack, if you ever have to leave and be armed and not have that gun taken away from you from, uh, by the authorities, if that's the case, as it has happened before, that's a handgun, handgun as well. It's the one that you have to put the most time into mastering because of all these reasons mentioned. My recommendation for someone going that way, Glock 19, Glock 17, unless, as I said in a previous video, unless you're a person that says, I'm not going to be practicing, I'm not going to be putting enough time into all this, so as to be proficient with a, a semi-auto pistol, in that case, go with a revolver, go back to the revolver video that I made explaining why a snubby revolver may be the best gun for you if you are that kind of person. Other than that, anyone doing this more responsibly and putting more time into it, Glock pistol. That would be my number one. Number two, forget the shotgun. The shotgun is a good jack of all trades, but it does not do anything uh, perfectly well. You know, it's it's a good uh, a good gun, but some other gun is gonna be able to do what the shotgun does even better, all right? So because of that reason, and because of it requiring a, a bit of practice as well, a bit of training, so as to be more proficient with it, I'm jumping the shotgun in a basic elemental uh, arsenal and going straight to the semi-automatic centerfire carbine, my recommendation being the AK-47 or AK-74. If you go for an AK-47, that's a gun that can actually double as a hunting gun. I mean, guys, the 762 by 39 round is actually similar to 3030, which is one of the favorite American deer hunting uh, calibers. Yes, you're not going to be in the cover of Classic Hunters magazine, but it is a gun that is quite capable of doing that. An AK is far more accurate than a lot of people give it credit for. They think that it's just limited to 100 rounds. can be shot 200, uh, 200 yards, uh, 300 yards uh, with, with good optics. It is quite capable of doing that. And it's well within the reach uh, of, of hunting distances. So with a good AK-47, good ammunition, and maybe a nice scope mounted into it, you can double with your semi-automatic uh, uh, carbine as a hunting gun as well. Uh, yes, in some cases you're going to be needing uh, magazines, the smaller magazines, I think it's the, the five round ones in, in certain jurisdictions, but yes, it's still a gun that is capable of taking down game as well. If we want to round this up a little bit and add a 22 long rifle a firearm to our armory, we would be going either for a 22 long rifle handgun or a 22 long rifle carbine, depending on your specific situation. Number three may be either one of these or both, of course. It basically comes down to this. If you're looking at a living in a living in a farm, living more in, 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 a, in the sticks and such, and you're going to be needing a, a field gun, a more a practical tool. In that case, and if you're looking especially at a putting down pests, doing pest control in, in your garden and such, 22 long rifle carbine may be what you need. If you are more in a suburban or urban environment and uh, chances of that it happening and you using that gun as a tool very frequently are, are less, then go for it in a, in a revolver, in a handgun version and uh, practice it in that way. It's still capable of, 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 of hunting with a with a good amount of practice if you become proficient with it, but it's going to be more handy in terms of how compact it is. And you don't need a, as much of a, of a field gun uh, unless you are in a more further away a farm, homestead, that sort of thing, which the case of uh, the carving makes more sense. Rounding up this a little bit more, uh, depending again on your uh, circumstances, if you have, if, if your overall location has further distances away from which you could be attacked, which is a, a probability, it is possible that if you're in, in a more isolated location and there's a larger ranges from where you could be engaged, in that case, make a bolt action scoped rifle, maybe a Remington 700, 
your fourth choice. The chances of that happening are not really that great. And even in that case, your second gun, the semi-automatic uh, centerfire carbine, the AK-47 or the AR, is going to be more than enough in that case. It's probably going to be the best choice for you rather than taking, trying to take these attackers down with a bolt action scope rifle. But still, especially if you have further ranges in which someone may be uh, engaging you as well with a bolt action scope rifle, in that case you may want to have that option too. Number five, I would make that the shotgun. Yeah, you, you can make a case for for the shotgun being more more uh, practical than we could do this. Basically, put it depending on on your personal circumstances, you may want to go for the shotgun instead of the bolt action as a as a fourth gun. You know, I just think that the shotgun is uh, as great as it is 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 lacking in many ways and people tend to think that it's more uh, practical for a number of, of roles than it actually is so that's why I'm not that fond of, of, of shotguns in general but you could say that for your number four you could go on, on either way and finally round this up with a nice air rifle these are cheap enough that you could get one of these uh, way before you end up buying something else so uh, do keep it in mind it is one of those things that it's, it's great especially for teaching kids it's great for pest control giving that it's the cheapest ammunition of all these so uh, a nice air rifle should indeed be part of your survival arsenal so but that's basically the, the priorities by which i would go by folks number one starting with like a handgun semi-automatic uh, an ak-47 later on and then uh, once you have these covered you can go with anything that you fancy so as to enjoy your your their firearms folks that's basically it quite a bit of time over 31 minutes now take care folks remember to subscribe see you on our next video have a great day